we're connecting to the cloud. You're on the cloud, okay, we're in. So we're in this overhead sequence for us today. So last week we worked like, as I said a second ago, the fat part of the chest and then into the pec minor. Today we're gonna work more around the traps, so like around the neck and into the front of the shoulder for us today. So we had the pec major, which is the fat part, pec minor, which kind of connects up into the shoulder, just underneath the shoulder. And then today we're gonna to come onto the shoulder, ideally with the ball, if we've got the ball. So the kind of different areas we're gonna be working for it will be thoracic spine. Again, we're gonna do the thoracic spine with the ball again today. Oh, check that peanut roller. Last week I spoke about the peanut ball. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen this before, but this is like a peanut ball. So this is like one that I made myself. This is exactly, you've got like a nice fancy one that's molded together. This is one that I made myself out of like two mob balls taped together with electrical tape. So if you have any two mob balls lying around, you can make your own. But these are great for getting your thoracic spine because Basically, what happens is these two work the muscles either side of the spine. Oh, perfect, Paul! You got. I knew you would have had all the gear. Your back muscles can work like either side on this ball, and then this gap in the middle leaves a nice space for the spine. Because the last thing that we want to be doing is sticking the ball into the spine. So that's the idea of these peanut rollers. We can and kind of work either side of the back. So I'm going to do four minutes today. Two minutes each side. If you've got a single ball. But if you've got a double ball, let's use this today for those who've got a double ball, and we'll work that down the middle of the thoracic spine with this. Now, Bori, you set down. Perfect. She's in a sports bra as well, so you can see this. And your arms shorts. And your arms <laughs> Hot. Come down. Yeah, so if we see like Louise's spine down the middle here, this will be like either side. So you've got space for the spine, and that will work up this muscle either side of the spine, right up to the top, and then right down to about here for us. If not, we just work single ball down the side. We never go down the middle. It's always on either side of that spine. So we're going to work the thoracic spine again. As I was mentioning to Paul, this is, and I've mentioned previously, this is so important for all of our movements. Um, then we're going to work onto the traps. So again, lying on the floor, but we're going to be focusing on here, the back of the traps. Then we're going to try and work into the top of the traps and then lastly onto the front of that shoulder. So they're going to be the kind of four areas or mobilizations that we work through today. The test for this is going to be our overhead test. So exactly like we did last week, it's going to be with a stick or with your hands. I'll do it with my hands today. Against the wall or against the floor. Bum touching, back touching. Head touching, hands roughly about shoulder width apart. We'll take those hands up as high as we can. Oh, I can touch a little bit. Touch the wall, but don't let the arms come out as you do this. That's going to give you more mobility. Try and keep that same distance apart, which is roughly about shoulder width, as you take that up. If you've got a stick, grab a stick. Try and do it with a stick. Or you can do it on the floor if you haven't got a wall. Same thing. Back bum touching, back touching, head touching, and let those hands go behind. As you can see, mine are just like hovering off. So hopefully when I come back to this later on, this should be able to touch. So hit your quick test first, see how that feels, and then we'll go into our warm-up. Ooh. Yeah, we're all tightened back up. I think this one will help you today, Paul, because you can see your front of your shoulders are tight, so this one should be a nice one for you today. Okay then guys, so warm up today is going to be jumping jacks, cat cows, scorpions, and then pushing through into the down dog with a bent knee. So 
When you're ready, find some space, jump up on your feet. So to battle warm up, it's gonna be jumping jacks first. Everyone up, come on Jaden's side. Here we go. Three, two, one, jumping jacks first. Three, two, one, and relax. Down to your knees. Going to be cat cows next. That's where we lift our head up, push the bum away, and then we push the floor away and round that back. Let's go. Four. Three, two, one. Lay down on the stomach. We're going to go alternate scorpions next. So that'll be one arm out. We're going to take the legs up and over. Let's go. Oh. Switch. I just had a huge crack in my back. Oh. You hear that? So this is great for the spine, it's great to loosen the chest off as well. And relax. Oh, my back's tight. <laughs> Next, let's push through with the down dog. We're gonna bend the knees, we're gonna push the head through the arms, and then back down to the knees again. And relax. Back on your feet. Two, one, let's go. Two, one, to the floor. Two, one, let's go, tuck the bum, put the chin, push the floor away, one more, the way down the spine, head up as high as we can, pull the shoulder blade back, tuck the hip, push the floor away, get away from the back, one more, and relax, scorpions. Two, Two, one, and into your down dog to the bent knee. Good, and relax. Okay, so. <laughs> grab your balls. So ideally single, ideally double. If you haven't got a single or double ball, you can use a roller for this again. So four minutes in total, we're gonna to do two minutes each side if you're working single. If you've got a double, it's gonna be four minutes working up and down that back or the roller. Thoracic spine first. So lying on the floor, getting the ball 
into position. Let me spin around. So again, here, you can press your weight up and down. Certain spots work your way from, from the upper back. Get back into shot, into the upper back. Good. We can extend over the ball. That can be with hands overhead. That can be with arms across the body. We can move the arm around as well. We can extend backwards, or we can work little rollers side to side, but working down either side of the spine. Okay, clock's going on. Three, two, one. So four minutes in total, two minutes each side if you're working a single. You can do the same with a roller if you've got the roller. I'm going to go on this peanut ball. I've not used this peanut ball for a while. So one of my favorite things to do, especially if I'm working with peanut ball, is to start off at the top, get the peanut ball into position. There we go. Roll down a little bit. Do a couple of extensions over the ball. Go down a little bit more. I say this one, when you use the ball, it takes a little bit of wiggling about to try and get it in the right position. We need to go back for this. Good. That's it, guys. Good work. I thought to myself, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is good. This is great. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Don't forget, we can also do our contract and relax as well. So if you have a super, super tight spot, which you're probably going to find with the single or double ball, big deep breath in, try and tense your back as much as we can. And as you breathe out, try and relax all your weight on that roller. It's two minutes gone. So if you're using a single ball, you can move on to the other side. You can just relax over the ball as well. Remember as we're doing the extensions, we want to keep the stomach with a little bit of tightness on, a little bit of tension. We don't want to let, like I was saying to you all earlier, Paul, we don't want to let the lower back loosen off. You're not doing that. You're saying we don't want to arch in the lumbar spine. We want to always be working that arch in the thoracic spine. three minutes. Sometimes if you're doing this at home on your own as well, if you can't get enough pressure, you can lift your hips up or you can even grab a dumbbell, put a dumbbell on your chest. Or you could even ask someone to sit on your chest. We've got about 10 seconds left. And relax. So next, we're going to work our way up to the trap. So we've worked down the middle of the back. Now, I'll buy you again. Was that too... 
That's four minutes. Four on one side. You know, Louise just did four minutes on one side, so now she's super bendy on one side. Okay, so just face that one, shall we? So now we're going to work the trap. So we're going to work down the middle of the back here. Now I want to work this trap muscle at the top. So we're going to lay on the ball for this. We're going to do two minutes. You can do this with a double. Again, you can get it right up to the neck and into that chunky part. Oh, sorry, just pull it here. It's not even that time of day either. Pull the shoulders back. You can see this trap muscle sticking up now. She's got some great traps. Look at those. Can you cross it? Yeah? Yeah. Be good. So we can work onto here as well, onto this side. Two minutes. I'll shout out a minute. So you've got a single ball. I'll shout out a minute so you can change over. Relax, thank you. Um, also, to really get these traps, once you kind of get it in, in under the neck, we can pressure wave side to side. Again, you can move the arm around, so up and down by the side. You can move it across the body. One of my favorite things to do with a single ball or a double ball is to try and lift the hips up, and you'll really get into those traps. You don't need to lift them up and hold them. It can be like up, back down again, up. Back down again, I'll just add the pressure into that trap muscle at the top. Okay, plot's gonna go on. Into position. Two minutes, here we go. Three, two, one. So pressure wave, side to side. You can do little circles as well. You might find a couple of knots in here. If you find a tight spot, try lifting the hips up and down. That's gonna really get the ball in deep. Ooh. Try the arm in different positions. Move it around. Move it across the body in a diagonal, move it up. Get it close to the neck, go down a little bit. Oh, yeah, found one. Oh. So, we actually, we're going to make this four minutes. We're going to do four minutes here. I think this needs it. Well, I need it. So, for those with a single ball, we're going to do two minutes each side. But yeah, keep searching. This is super tight for me, so I'm guessing it's probably similar for others. Work those knots. Move the arm around in different position. Try lifting the hips up and down. Oh, Jesus. You can contract and relax as well. Don't forget that one. Squeeze the hips up and try and relax. So that's two minutes, other side. So again, get the ball into position, roll around. Oh, straight away, find a knot. Traps can get super tight if, again, the sat at computers. If we get stressed, the neck will get super tight as we start to shrug those shoulders. Ooh. Play around with the arm in different positions. You can move the arm to a different position and then pressure wave with your arm in a different position as well. For me on this side, this overhead position is really knotty. It wasn't on the other side. So again, don't forget, you know, one side that's different to the other. Ooh. 
Got one more minute left on this side. Big deep breaths as well as you do this. Again, this is a tender area, so we need to try and make sure we try and relax. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, relax. Okay, so next, we're gonna try and hit the traps again, but we're gonna try and hit the traps from a different angle. So hopefully people have, have, have like a, a wall or a door frame or something like that. That's where we're gonna try and work next. And borrow you a mobility model. Okay, so next, sit here. Face the camera this time. Oh, hey. <laughs> so now we're going to try and tack this trap from the top. So we're going to try and do this against kind of like a, a corner of a wall or a door frame if we have door frames. Basically, we're going to end up hinging forward and then we're trying to get the trap in the top here now. So we can kind of work from the neck. Instead of hitting it from behind, we're going down on the trap this time. So if you hold the camera for me. So this can work in a door frame. This will work against a wall like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna place the ball on a wall. I can't. Ideally, I want a wall or a door frame or a table <laughs> or a table mm -hmm. that allows us to kind of come in from the top. So a corner works best because I've got somewhere to put my head. So that's gonna go into the wall. I'm gonna hinge over to like roughly 90 degrees and come into the top of the trap. And then as I'm hitting this position, go back a little bit, keep going, keep going, keep going, that's it. I can like do little pressure waves side to side, up and down. I can move the arm across the body, drive the arm in a different position. I can move the arm around backwards and forwards. But that's the aim, to attack the trap from the top. So see if you can find a door frame or a wall for this. If no one's got that, I can try and show you a different version. Anybody not got a door frame or a wall? Yes, no? Okay, cool. Same again, we're gonna spend two minutes on each side this time. So we're gonna hinge over, we're gonna get that ball into the top of the trap. Clock going on. Now. That's it, so hinge over where we can. Yeah, just keeping an eye on people. That's it. I want to do this one. This is a great one. This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. That's it, so lean over into that 90 degree position, get the ball into the top. And then we can like do a little circle. We can move the arm across the body and back. Mm. I'm testing you all now. We're using our whole house. <laughs> this is a great one to really tack the traps from the top, which we can't always do when we're lying down on the floor. Well, it's a minute. Keep working in different areas. Let the ball come up by the top of the neck. Let it go down towards the shoulder. Work all up and down that trap. You can hold the ball as well as you do this. Totally up to you. There you go. We've got about 20 seconds left. I'm going to hit the other side. Is 
actually one of my favorites, this one. So you can get super tight. For me, it's like closer to the neck. Four, three, two, one. Switch over, other side. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Clock is back on. I've got a bomb in my face here now. Uh, <laughs> so only <in the> wall. <laughs> Nice guys. So again, it's going to be little circles. It's going to be like small pressure waves up and down, small pressure waves side to side. Go play. Try this with the arm in different positions as well. That's it. We can move the arm around, or we can just move the arm to a different position and pressure wave. See what feels tightest. Again, work the ball from the shoulder to the neck. We should be feeling this like down on the truck this time. One more minute. I'll sing you a song as you do this. Any requests? We've got 30 seconds left. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. Now we can go back to the floor. Thank you for that. And now we're going to go into the front of the shoulder. So we're going to lay it on the floor. Again, last week we did pet major, which is the chunky part, pet minor, which is just in front of the shoulder. Now I'm going onto the shoulder for this one. So I'm going to attack this from laying down on the floor. I like to put the hand behind the back. And hold the ball under the shoulder, and then from here, working that front deltoid. Come oh, down, Tad. Again, we can pressure wave like side to side. Mine's really knotty, so you might feel like a couple of almost feel like a marble under the skin, up and down, little circles. Again, I can move the arm around, so let me move back. I can move this arm around in different positions too. Mine's usually about here. You can do small movements, flosses with the arms. You can contract and relax. You can use the other hand to push some weight into the shoulder so you can lean into the ball as well. But last one, two minutes each side working the front of the shoulder. So not the pet minor, not underneath the shoulder on the shoulder this time. Yeah, this is another one that you can do up against the wall as well. You can contract and relax. Just laying on this board is more than enough for me, personally. More little circles. Move the hand around in a different position. I, like to really, I personally like to rotate the arm as I do this as well. I take it from the palm facing down to the palm facing up. I 
one minute on this side. Again, you can use your other hand to push off the other side of the floor to add more pressure. Again, this is really painful, like it is for me. You don't have to do anything. You can just try and relax on the ball. Just laying on it for some people is more than enough. So guys, we'll switch to the other side. Then you can use his hand to add more pressure if you need. Small pressure waves. Oh, this side is just, right side is super tight for me. Okay, we've got one more minute left. Then you try moving the arm into different positions as well. Pressure waving in different positions, flossing and small floss movements up and down. Thirty seconds left. Right ones, so bad. Maybe my wrist looks in this side. Two, one, and relax. So hit your retest, whether that was against a wall or whether that was on the floor. So same again, get your hands back. Oh yes, yeah, so now my hands are touching. If you remember at the beginning, they couldn't touch. So much looser for me there. But try it on the floor, try it against the wall if you do it against the wall. Definitely, loose. I still feel, for me personally, I still feel a little tight in the upper back. Awesome. Well done, guys. I know I've mentioned this before, but it's also it's always good to have a like a mobility diary as well. So then, because we hit so many different places, you might find that one place is surprisingly surpri surprisingly really tight, and then this may be causing like tightness in other areas. So like before Jaden side come in, uh, Paul was saying he has pain in his lower back. So you could keep note of this. You could go, okay, right, today my thoracic spine was super tight. So that might be some an area that I might need to do some more mobility work on my own. Um, again, for the lower back, Louise said hamstrings. Hamstrings can be cause low back pain, but also hips can be cause low back pain as well. So just making notes of like areas that feel particularly tight is a great thing for you to then think, say, for example, goblet squats come up again. Okay, and get that low back pain. Where am I feeling it? Is it like, could it be my thoracic spine? 
Is my hamstrings feeling a little tight? Is my hip feeling a little bit tight? And then it just makes you wary of these tight areas when we start moving them yeah. as well. Cool. So a mobility diary is always great to just kind of like note things down in. And then you'll always be kind of like wary in your movements then, which will make it much easier for us then to fix. Cool. How did you find the wall trap from the top? <laughs> okay, last one. Several times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, cool. Any questions on any of that? Now, who knew it could be that painful? Oh, just no. that, that yeah. little piece and, and on the front of your shoulder there, that was just, and uh, yeah. That front of the shoulder was terrible for me. Like, the left side wasn't too bad, but my right was really, really tight. Mm. And also coming down on the trap from the top, that's sometimes an area that's like really hard for us to get. So being able to like hinge over against a wall or a door frame, like is great. Sometimes when we're in the gym, when we get back into the gym again, we can use rollers, sorry, rollers, barbells as well. Barbells are great to kind of get on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there'll be plenty more for us to play around with when that time comes. <laughs> okay, then guys. Cool. So I'll, uh, yeah, next week then, Paul, I'll try and put some low back kind of stuff in. Okay, well. perfect. Thank you. Okay, then guys, have a great cool. day. All right, have a great day, guys. Cheers. See you. I don't see you tomorrow. Cheers. See you guys. Cheers, Dane.